This is a story from a city where the gap between rich and poor is greater than almost anywhere in the world. It is a story of six people in a city of 15 million. It is the story of Jinya, of Paola, of Shanji, of Du, of Fernando, and of their guru Vanda. It's the story of a group of friends trying to make the best of their lives when the odds are stacked against them. Together, they call themselves the Posse. The friends who make up the Posse live in a favela or shanty town called the Jardin San Severo. They've built their friendship round rap music. They meet in the evening when they're not at school or university or working or trying to find work. The good thing about the posse is that it keeps young people off the streets and away from drugs and violence. People who haven't got anything to do all day, if they take part, well, at least they have something to do. We invite people to be part of the posse, to keep them away from violence and off drugs. Our organization, the Posse, is linked to the hip-hop movement, and the idea is to develop projects to help our community. Part of the idea is to talk to people living here. After all, you don't need money to talk. The Posse have just launched a campaign to try and clean up the river of filth that flows through the favela's heart and close to Genia's front door. People who live here are the same as everyone else. They have their dreams. They throw their rubbish where they shouldn't. Not because they are bad, but because everyone else does. And there isn't a culture that says you shouldn't do it. So everyone just goes on doing it. We are not just looking for a hand cleaning all these up. We also want to give you some leaflets to pass around the people here, to get them to stop throwing the rubbish in the stream. And we want you to talk to them. But look, they all know that the garbage truck only comes once a week. And, you know, whenever I try to talk to people, they just get offended. I don't want to lose my friends. Virginia and her friends, Vander is the boss. He's very quiet, but that's because he's thinking of lots of different solutions for every problem. That's why he's called the president. Today, Vander's joined a march through the city center with teachers, university professors and landless workers. They're marching down the Avenida Paulista, the business avenue through which 70% of Brazil's wealth is said to flow. Their message for Brazil's financial authorities too much of that wealth goes to too few people. As usual, Vanda has a solution. I think we have to create a new tax for those earning a lot of money. A big portion of public money has to be redistributed to those in need, to the poor. And with that money, there will be a better distribution of resources. Back in the streets of the favela, it's not hard to see how these problems began. Few in the posse are more observant of social trends than Genia's friend Paula. Paula is my mate and my partner in a study group. We got into the University of Sao Paulo at the same time. She's going to be an anthropologist and she's my favorite singer. When we are walking around Jardim San Salveiro, we often notice little cultural things like music from the north of Brazil. That's because for ages a lot of people from the northeast of Brazil have been coming to São Paulo to try and get a better life. 
There's a lot of land up there, but most people don't own any of it. I think that the music we hear in the street comes from people trying to bring back and preserve the things they left behind when they came here to try and make a better life. What stops the landless migrants making a better life in the favelas for their children is education. This is the state school in the Jardin San Severo, where some of the posse members were educated and where some of Gina's friends, like Fernando, still take classes. Fernando is part of a band called Angels of Rap. He's 15 and he's just about to finish high school. He is an angel of rap and he's also very quiet. Education is good because it keeps you away from crime. It's like a support for everything in life. Without education, we can't get a job. That's what education is good for. The education that other people receive is completely different from our education. Our education is inferior. They learn a lot more than we do. We learn a lot less. Their education is more advanced because they have more money. Genia is one of the very few young people in the favela who's beaten the odds of an unequal education system and made it to a top university. She still lives at home with the rest of her family, even though the campus is a two-hour bus drive away. In the beginning, I thought, no, I won't be able to go to one of the state universities. I had never even thought about going, and everybody around here always thought it was impossible, at least for people like us. And then one day I thought more seriously about it and just started studying straight away. I began by getting together all the books that I'd already studied and never had any interest in and start to read them again. I started to read the books at home and at night I organized a study group with people in the area. I was the only one from high school who's been able to get into university so far. The inequality is really huge. When I started studying in my class, it was a great shock. Everybody was talking about mobile phones, inviting me to go out with them. But I don't have money, never had money, while they go to the cafeteria in university to fancy dress parties. Here in Brazil, we encounter a lot of inequality, and when I leave the favela to go to university, I come across lots of things that are out of my reach. Restaurants, shops, all is very busy. And then I think, how come if I don't have anything? If lots of people don't have anything, other people have so much. I wasn't that conscious of that before. I could see it on the television, but you know the television isn't your world, so when you see it live, it's a shock. From the downtown skyscrapers, you can see Sao Paulo in a way Genia still never sees it. The favelas, the pollution, even the curvature of the earth. All remind us that this is one of the world's megacities, its economy fueled by globalization. But with only a small minority of Sao Paulo's 15 million people able to afford a decent education, few can aspire to the salaries available to the city's professional elites, the bankers or international lawyers like Alessandre and Fernando. This is the most prestigious law firm in Brazil. We have uh, many, many people that are candidates to, to do a trainership program here. And when we recruit them, we look not only at the college that they are in, but also at the school that they attended before. And uh, in a way, we are creating elite here because we, 9% of the people here come from the same schools and uh, from the same universities. 
is it possible for a kid in the favelas to do as well as you've done? Instead of saying that it's possible, I would say that it's almost impossible. I mean, it's really, really very difficult. We should do something to make this country better. And we try to do that, you know, uh, with people that surround us. That's not a critic to other people, it's a critic to myself as well. I mean, I think the elite is too, I would say, uh, comfortable with the situation and, and tend not to do things to change. Because uh, uh, the elite is responsible for the situation as it is, and the elite is now waking up to the problem more uh, uh, effective due to the violence and not due to the sadness that is the problem. I would say that if, if we did not have any violence problems, maybe we wouldn't be thinking about that as we are nowadays. In the building where Sao Paulo's lawyers like to lunch is the trading floor of the city's stock exchange. Brazilian companies have prospered under the country's neoliberal economic regime. Globalization, a deregulated economy and technology have meant a stable economy and huge fortunes for some of the city's entrepreneurs. I started Zipnet in 1996, four years ago. And we recently have been purchased by Portugal Telecom. Can I ask for how much? Oh, it's in the papers. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, the price was $365 million. How much of that went to you personally, can I ask? That's, I prefer to keep a private. But, but quite a lot of it. Uh, so significant, yeah. Would that make you one of the wealthiest men in Brazil? No, there are people with much more money than that. Much more money? Yeah, for sure. But it's still a lot of money. It's still a lot of money, no doubt. How do you feel about that? I mean, does that make you feel that uh, people can make it in Brazil? Or does it make you feel, in, in any sense, uneasy because it is such an unequal society? No, definitely people can make it. I think uh, if, you are, if you don't have a home, if you don't have what to eat, you cannot obviously be thinking on how to do something like this, obviously. And that's the thing, that's the basic thing society should be able to give them. And for me, the goal now is uh, to be able to help in doing something like that. And money is a tool to do things after a certain uh, amount of money, of course. Now Mr. de Marais wants his company to give computers away to schools in Sao Paulo's favelas. We are trying to give education for free to everybody, and they will become our clients in the future. Uh, use the liberal system in a favor. It's, it's such a strong force there. Even the favela's residents are trying a little trading of their own. The hopeful owner of this shack has put it up for sale. It's yours for a few hundred dollars if you're not worried about title deeds. But Genia, the only university student from her year, doesn't see her future in economic terms at all. My future is literature. Literature is about everyone's future. Many people write about stars. I mean, this has been used many times, but when I write about stars, I try and use them differently. I'm not really talking about stars at all. Behind the words, there is a social, religious and sexual context. There is always literature in the poems that I write. My poems are metalinguistic. They threw away the horizon line and I made a nest of it, which lies in my hands. God, look at the horizontal buildings the dirty dressing they've put on. And God have mercy on us, the seed of society sterile. I come from the favela and I belong to it. But some of Genia's friends are now trying to join the commercial world that lies beyond the favela. They're looking for jobs downtown. Dew's been lucky. He persuaded a friend to find him a job at a TV music channel. Genia always knew him as a good networker. Du is a very nice guy, one of the co-founders of the Posse. He's a good conciliator and he's always talking. Du works as an infantry clerk, surrounded by the glamour of the pop world, but what he wants to be is a teacher. 
Porque eu não sei, eu tenho uma coisa assim comigo. I'm the kind of person that likes to pass on my experience to others. Um pouquinho do que eu aprendi, entende? The little that I have learned, I like to share around. Eu acho que dar aula é a forma uma das I think teaching is one of the best ways to be close to other human beings. Perto do ser humano. A favela sabe como é. É bem diferente, apesar que aqui na MTV. It's quite different around here. People at MTV do have a pretty liberal attitude. But I still feel like I'm very different coming from the favelas. You know, people in the favelas are more humble. And I mean, a lot of people out there have never even seen a computer or a camera. But another friend of Genius has not been so lucky trying to find work. Shandy, he's a supporter of ours, though he's not officially part of the posse these days. He doesn't want to take on the responsibility. He's a very nice guy who is always busy like everybody else in the posse. Shandy's going into town to look for a job. He knows it won't be well paid. Brazil's statutory minimum wage is only $150 a month. What's more, at the employment agency, he and his friend discover most of the jobs on offer are so far away from the favela that it cost him more in travel than they pay him. Inside, the clerk says his previous employers didn't give Shanji the papers to prove he'd had a job. He says they must have been trying to avoid paying social security. So he's sent away on a probably hopeless errand, trying to prove he has had a job, when the job was in Brazil's flourishing underground economy. Well, I can't stop. I need a job to sort out my life, to afford all the things I need. Without a job, I will never be anyone. I need a job urgently. In a society where there's no limit to the top or to the bottom, the penalties for not finding work can be severe. This homeless shelter is run by a charity. Its workers' usual greeting... Watch out for rats. Inside, over a hundred people live in a warren of rooms, sharing two toilets and one shower. This is where you may end up if you can't afford a shack in a favela. One day I was upstairs and I counted 16 rats and they were all fighting. Inside this maze we found one man alone in his room with his books. He'd found them around the neighborhood. Juan knows you need an education to better yourself in today's knowledge economy and he's still determined that somehow he'll get it. He used to work as a clown. His costume still hangs on the wall. This book is about mathematics, square roots. I enjoy reading, and I think reading is important. I intend to be an engineer. If I study, I'll have good opportunities in life. If I start working in a company and I have studied, the company will be interested in me. I'll try to do my job honestly, and I'll find someone who will appreciate my efforts to study hard. I leave all the books like this because I start with the easiest and go on to the more difficult. This book is about the search for freedom in Brazil in time of slavery. I think history is repeating itself because of the lack of jobs and because when people do offer you a job, it is just in exchange for a plate of food. <laughs> In the favela, Xanji is back with his friends on the soccer pitch built by the Sao Paulo authorities. A pleasant surprise to a group of young people 
who believe politicians don't understand the life they sing about in their rap songs. Whenever we compose a song, we all do it together. We just link ideas from one to the other. And the band is everybody. Nobody is more important than anybody else. The ideas come day by day. If I experience violence during the day, I talk about it. If it's about discrimination, I talk about that. I rap about my days as they happen. I don't like talking about fantasy, I talk about the reality. A minha família que sempre me ajudou na hora do sufoco, não me deixou falando igual a certos manos, então filho da puta, continuo rimando, só a favela sabe como é. Sempre correria e bandido eu tô de pé, só a favela sabe como é. Sempre correria e bandido eu tô de pé. Dizem que preto é a cor e negro é a raça, a cor preferida que a polícia embaça. Ao contrário do branco, minha atitude é a tal. Não entro no crime, não quero ser marginal. Não quero acabar no mundo de uma cela. Que nem o puta meu que morava na favela. Já era pai de família. Se eu fosse presidente amanhã. If I was president of the country, I would direct a good part of the budget to social policies to cover education, health and housing. That's what's lacking in Brazil. I would make agricultural reforms because I think if you don't have a place to live, you have no dignity. If I was the president, I would look into education because education here is very bad. But you have examples from other countries that show that by providing better education, you are able to build up a nation. And I would also change all these neoliberal policies. At the end of another Sunday, the posse walked back into the heart of the favela. A group of young people, often quarrelsome, sometimes combative, but still together in a world that doesn't make that easy.